Soldiers in the United States Army have to do a physical fitness test that requires them to do as many push-ups as they can in two minutes, as many sit-ups as they can in two minutes, and run two miles as fast as they can. But if you want to know a lot more detail involved with the Army physical fitness test, stick around because I'm going to explain it here for you. What's up? I'm Christopher Chaos, U.S. Army veteran, and in this video, I'm going to break down how the Army Physical Fitness Test works. So the Army Physical Fitness Test, or APFT, or PT test, is required that soldiers must do one every six months or less. The Physical Fitness Test is broke down into three events. The push-up, the sit-up, and the two-mile run. Now, each event is scored based on a percentage. So a certain amount of push-ups and a certain amount of sit-ups equals a percentage based on if you're male or female and what age category you fall under. Soldiers must, at a minimum, get 60% in each category. So when soldiers have to do a physical fitness test, there will be multiple graders, which are usually non-commissioned officers, and then the soldiers will be broken down into multiple groups for each grader. The first event is the push-up. The first soldier in line will step up to the grader. They will get down onto all fours. There will be a timekeeper somewhere that will be giving the commands for when to start and also keeping track of time. The timekeeper will give the command of get ready. At this time the soldiers should be down on all fours. The timekeeper then gives the command of get set. At this time the soldiers will assume the front leaning rest position. The front leaning rest position is basically your arms locked out, your feet kicked out so that your body is not touching the ground. The only thing that is touches the ground is your hands and your feet. And your back is straight. When the timekeeper gives the command of go or begin, the soldiers then have two minutes to do as many push-ups as they can. So for a push-up to count, the soldier must have their arms fully locked out, which is the up position, and then move to the down position, which will then require their elbows to be parallel with their shoulder blades, as well as their back straight. No bowing in the middle or arching in the back. Once the soldiers come back to the locked out position with their back straight and their arms locked out, that is one. Now after doing multiple push-ups, they are allowed to rest in some way. The authorized rest position is either arching your back straight up or sagging in the middle, as long as your torso does not touch the ground. You are allowed to bend your knees a little bit in the rest position, but it cannot exceed a 45 degree angle. A soldier can get disqualified from the push-up event if one of the hands come off the ground, one of the feet come off the ground, or their body touches the ground. So for a male between the ages of 17 and 21, they must do at least 42 push-ups in those two minutes to pass that event. If they want to max that event, then they would need to do 71 push-ups. A female between the age of 17 and 21 is required to do it at a minimum of 19 push-ups. And if she would like to max out in that event, she will have to do 42 push-ups. Now you may be asking, why would someone do more than the minimum that they need to do to pass? Well, in some cases, soldiers need to do the max or try to get as close to the max as they can to earn the most possible points that they can for promotion. Also, some soldiers are trying to, you know, compete with their friends, compete within the unit to get higher PT scores because sometimes commanders will give incentives. Now, as that soldier gets older, the minimum in order to reach a 60% in that event does decrease. For example, a male between the ages of 52 and 56 only has to do 20 push-ups in order to reach that 60%. And a female between the ages of 52 and 56 only has to do 9 to reach the 60% mark. But as a soldier gets older to get 100% in that event, the max actually goes up for a while. And then later as they get older, then it starts to kind of come back down again. For example, a male between the age of 17 and 21 to get 100% needs to do 71 push-ups. Whereas when they reach the age of 27, they now have to do 77 push-ups to max. And then it starts to drop once they reach the age of 37. So when the two minutes has expired for the push-up event, the soldier will stop, the grader will write down how many push-ups they successfully completed correctly, and they will go to the back of the line. Now once all the soldiers have completed the push-up event, they will then move on to the sit-ups. Now typically, the soldier that last completed the push-ups will stay in place and hold the feet of the next soldier that is going to begin the sit-up event. Now just like the push-up event, it'll start off with the timekeeper saying, on your marks, get set, begin. At the command of on your marks, the soldier will be lying on their back with their legs at a 45 degree angle and a soldier holding their feet while their fingers are interlocked behind their head and their shoulder blades flat on the ground. They will then be given get set and then begin or go. Now once they are given the command to go, the soldier will have two minutes to do as many sit-ups as that soldier can possibly do. For a sit-up to count, the soldier must start off 
with their shoulder blades touching the ground and hands interlocked behind their head. They will then come to the up position, which would be the spine at an upward position and your elbows past your knees. And then when the soldier goes back to the start position with their shoulder blades touching the ground, that will count as one. Now the resting position for the sit-up is usually either in the up position or in the down position. And a soldier can get disqualified from the sit-up event if their butt comes off the ground, if their hands come from behind their head, or their hands become uninterlocked and they break free from behind their head. Once the two minutes has expired, the grader will then write down how many sit-ups that soldier completed correctly. And that soldier usually stay in place and hold the feet of the next soldier that is coming up to do the sit-up event. Now for the standards for sit-ups, it is actually the same for both men and women in the Army. For a soldier between the ages of 17 and 21, they must do 53 correct sit-ups to get at least 60% and pass that event. If they want to max, then they will need to do 78 sit-ups in under two minutes. Now the next event, once everybody has completed the sit-up event, is the two-mile run. Usually located somewhere nearby is where they would conduct the two-mile run, either on a track or on the road. If the two mile run is going to be conducted on a track, they will tell the soldiers how many laps it will take to reach two miles. Typically the grader that graded the soldier during the push up and sit up event will also be the one to kind of keep track as to how many laps that soldier did. Usually maybe they might have a number on their chest or the grader is just responsible for remembering what that soldier looks like so they can keep track of how many laps they've done. If the two mile run is gonna be done on a road, then usually the road should be fairly level-ish. It shouldn't have too many hills. If they do, they shouldn't be steep hills or any large hills. Most of the time it's a straightaway, but there are some cases where it's not a full straightaway. That's how the two mile work on a road is the soldier would run out to a one mile mark, which is usually indicated by another soldier standing there to let the soldiers know when they've reached the one mile mark and then tell them to turn around and head back to the start line. Now for the two mile run, all the soldiers that were doing the push-ups and the sit-ups will all gather up together, get on a start line, and they will give the same type of command on your marks, get set, go. Once they say go, soldiers will take off, and the timekeeper usually won't start the clock until the back of the group has crossed the start line. So the soldiers that kind of got to the front of the line may get a couple seconds shaved off their time. Soldiers then run out to the one mile mark or do as many laps as they can, and then once they get back, they'll be given a time. For men between the ages of 17 and 21, they must complete the two mile run in less than 15 minutes and 54 seconds. And if they would like to max it, they would have to do it in under 13 minutes. For a female soldier between the ages of 17 and 21, they must complete the two mile run in less than 18 minutes and 54 seconds. And to max it, they must do it in less than 15 minutes and 56 seconds. Now the soldiers running the two miles, they are allowed to walk to jog, to run, whatever the case might be. Obviously it's gonna affect your time based on if you're walking or even if you stop walking. The only way a soldier can get disqualified from a two mile run is if they leave the course or they get some kind of help or aid uh, in running, being carried or something like that from another person. Now once the physical portion of the test is completed, meaning they are done with the push-ups, done with the sit-ups and everybody is done with the run, typically afterwards follows a weigh-in tape. Soldiers will be required to be weighed after the physical fitness test, and if they exceed the limits of their weight based on their sex, their age, and their height, then they will then need to be taped where they will measure the uh, circumference around your neck and around your stomach to see if you meet the tape requirements. So for a female between the age of 17 and 21, with a height of 5 feet 9 inches, cannot weigh more than 179 pounds. If they weigh more than 179 pounds, then it comes down to a different kind of equation where they have to measure her neck and her waist to determine if she is under those requirements though. And if so, then she passes, but if she is overweight plus the neck and the waist uh, measurements do not meet the standards, then she's considered overweight. Now for a male between the age of 17 and 21, who is six foot tall, cannot weigh more than 190 pounds. Now if they weigh more than 190 pounds, same kind of process applies where they have to get then get their neck measured and their uh, waist measured. Now it is possible for a soldier to pass all the events in the physical fitness test, but not pass weight. And if that soldier doesn't pass weight, still pretty much doesn't count as passing the APFT, really. I mean, sure, they passed the APFT portion of it, but if they didn't make weight, then you still have some consequences because of that. And a lot of times you still kind of get treated as the same as someone who failed the APFT. 
because usually people who fail AAPFT or don't make weight and tape will often have to do what's called remedial PT, which means they have to do PT twice a day in the morning and after work. So there you go, that is how the Army Physical Fitness Test works. Hopefully you found this educational, interesting, however you may look at it. If you liked it, make sure to show this video some love and hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to this channel and you're interested in more military stuff or some of the other content that I create on this channel, like some camera tutorials, video tutorial stuff, and anything else that I can throw in there, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm Christopher Chaos, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.